Well, happening now, the president wrapping up three days of visits to Capitol Hill, meeting with top Republican lawmakers and trying to reach a compromise on the nation's budget problems. How optimistic should we be after the week that we had? Who better to ask than White House Press Secretary Jay Carney? So, Jay, where does the president see specifically um, some common ground to build upon? Well, Jenna, as you know, he met with uh, Republicans and Democrats in both the House and the Senate this week. And that's building on a series of engagements he's had with lawmakers, uh, including, as you know, the, the dinner he had with a group of Republican senators last week. And what he's looking for is uh, a conversation with those members of the Republican Party, in particular, who are interested in returning to a big deal and to, the, and to uh, accepting the premise that uh, we can find common ground here when we try to resolve our budget uh, differences and put ourselves on uh, you know, a deficit reduction path by agreeing that we should pair uh, cuts to our entitlements, reforms to our entitlements, uh, with tax reform that also generates revenue. You know, the notion that if we're going to ask more of our seniors and middle class families, uh, that we ought to ask a little more from the well off and well to do through tax reform. So, let me so ask, there's let, been some. Go let, ahead. Let me just ask you a little bit about that because the president mm -hmm. has said that he's open to changing the way that Social Security benefits. The increase for Social Security benefits are, are figured out, are calculated. He said that he's right. open to that as part of a big deal. But if the president feels so strongly that changing that would be great for our country as a whole, why not just do it? Why, why use it as a bargaining Well, sure, chip? Jenna. I know that uh, that's certainly the Republican line, that, that we should do what they want to do and what's hard for Democrats, but not what's hard for Republicans. And, and that's not how balance works. Why should we ask seniors to give, but uh, allow the well-off and well-to-do to keep special tax loopholes and exemptions in the tax code that uh, achieve through largely through lobbyist work, uh, and not ask them to pay a little bit more? But if it's for the uh, good of the country, make any sense. Jay, if it's for what's for the best good of for the country, everybody, well, then why not consider it? Well, because what's good for the country is balance. Because if you don't have balance, Jenna, you have what we see in the Ryan budget, the Tax Policy Center today said that the tax cuts that go disproportionately to the wealthy in the Ryan budget would cost $5.7 trillion. Guess who pays for that? Middle class families. There's no way to get revenue neutral tax reform to the tune of $5.7 trillion without sticking it to the middle class to the tune of thousands of dollars a year. So has that's anything just how it works. Has anything math, changed, That's how Jay? the math works. Has anything what changed really in the last week? We started out talking about common ground and maybe sure. turning a corner for a, a bigger deal, something that could really help this nation. Are things well, any Jenna, different you, this Friday from last Friday? Well, th the conversations have continued. As you know, uh, one of the reasons uh, the president uh, asked Lindsey Graham, the senator from South Carolina, to organize uh, a group of senators for that dinner the other night was because many uh, Republican senators have expressed interest in a bigger deal. And some have very explicitly said that they would agree to uh, a package of entitlement savings reforms uh, uh, with tax reform that generated revenue. Senator Graham himself has said so explicitly. And, and th what's a encouraging about that is that's where the country is. Hmm. I and mean, the polls on this are unequivocal. I mean, you know, the only place where you can find disagreement about the need to move forward with balance is, is up on Capitol Hill, you know, among some Republicans, especially in the House. Okay. Because the, the public thinks balance is what we ought to do. So let me ask you a little bit about these White House tours. Uh, the president sure. gave an interview earlier this week, and he said, you know, this isn't a White House decision. It's a Secret Service decision. But I'm going to ask, I'm paraphrasing the president, uh, I'm going to ask to see if they can figure out a way to get school kids in. Uh, he also said, though, that this is a consequence of sequestration. So, mm -hmm. Jay, which is it? Is there, is there room to change this, or is this the consequence of sequester? Well, it is the consequence of sequester. I don't, I'm surprised to hear the suggestion this late date that it's anything else. The Secret Service, like every agency in government, uh, has to cut its budget significantly because of sequester. That's how the law was written, uh, and that's what everyone's doing at Defense and everywhere else across the government, including uh, the Department of Homeland Security and the U.S. Secret Service. But the White House As is going to be open for the Easter egg roll for, for families, for right, Congress, and that's, and but, that's, but not open paid. for families that are just, you know, regular families out there that want to visit Well, actually, the White House. Jenna, again, if you did a little reporting, you'd know that the Easter egg roll is open for a lot of military families. A. B. It's paid for by the sale of those, serum, you know, those eggs that come out, uh, as well as from donations on the outside. So it's a totally different budget. Okay. You know, these, these are apples and oranges. Secondly, uh, the president did ask, and, and there are conversations ongoing, whether or not there's some uh, accommodation that can be made for some 
tours to uh, be uh, to take place. But the overall policy of canceling the tours has to happen because the Secret Service doesn't have the personnel to staff that very labor-intensive process. Uh, if it staffed those tours uh, it, with a full return of the tours, it would have to furlough Secret Service agents and cut their pay, uh, which is not a happy option. Well, as a member of the mil a military family, I appreciate the fact that military families are invited to that, that Easter egg roll. Final question for you here, Jay, on the Benghazi terror attack. There was uh, some headlines today, some exclusive reporting done by our team here at Fox News that three diplomatic security agents were injured in that attack. And lawmakers and journalists would like access to some of these survivors, um, either these three or any others that are out there. Is this White House preventing those survivors from speaking publicly or asking them not to? Well, first of all, I have no knowledge of this story. Secondly, I'm sure that the White House is not preventing anyone from speaking. Uh, the, look, the, what happened in Benghazi was a tragedy. It resulted in the death of four Americans. Uh, from the instant that it happened, the president ordered uh, every action to be taken uh, to ensure that uh, our embassies were secure uh, and that uh, an investigation was launched so that this kind of thing could never happen again. And this president also made clear that those who were responsible for the deaths of four brave Americans in Benghazi uh, would be held accountable, and that investigation continues. Uh, our interest is on what happened in Benghazi and, and not on you know, the political ramifications of this political debate that we've seen uh, you know, over the course of the last several months. And the president's focused on that. So does the president have an official position at all at, at helping lawmakers or Congress get access to the survivors? Will the White House be part I, of that process Again, at all? Jen, I, I, I appreciate it. I, I just don't even, uh, I'm not familiar with the story. Okay. I should have been watching Fox earlier. I'm sure we can get more information on that for you. That would be great, Jay. We always appreciate it. You want to make this a regular Friday thing? We're open to it. Hey, if you're available I'm always happy, always happy to be on your air. Thank you. Jay, nice to see you. Thank you for the time. All right. You and too, we'll Jen. be right Take back care. with more.